So in this lecture, I will talk about the rotation of uh, rigid bodies and some kinematical quantities related with this. And so far we have dealt with only uh, objects which are uh, supposed to be point particles, but now we are going to deal with uh, objects like, uh, let's say, uh, this shape, maybe. So uh, we are dealing with now uh, not the translation of this object in some direction, but rather we will fix it at some point. Let's say this is the point. We fix it. Maybe a just screw that, uh, you know, screw it to a, a, like a, a wooden board or something like that. So uh, it only allowed to rotate around this fixed point. Okay. So let's also put uh, our coordinate system in such a way that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So if we choose any any point on this uh, rigid body, let's say this is the point, while this uh, body is rotating in this direction, let's uh, rotate it a little bit, all points, all points will rotate with this body uh, together. Let's say, uh, imagine that this is somehow rotated uh, in this way. Okay. So, uh, let's say this is this was the uh, point in the first case, and now it is uh, rotated. Now the, this point comes to there. So this is the original point. Let's draw a line that connected to the uh, uh, rotational fixed rotational axis this is the uh, uh, fixed point that rotate that the object rotates and we can imagine that there is an axis that goes through this point and this object is rotating around that ax axis now it's rotating it's rotating some degree let's say to here so original point that we have chose that has some distance to the fixed point r uh, will not change it, uh, it will be the same R, okay? But it is rotated, rotated in this manner that it uh, traverses a section of a circle, okay? And whenever you choose any point on the body, uh, when you rotate that body, that point will move along a circular path. This is obvious. Because the distance to the center is not changed. So if you keep rotating it, this point will just, uh, you know, traverse a circular, circular, circular line. Okay. So let's imagine that this rotation is like uh, delta T, amount of delta t theta. Okay. The delta theta is the amount of rotation. It might be small or large, whatever it is. And this is delta theta. And this was the original uh, angle for this point, the line that connect this point to the uh, rotational axis and the x-axis. Let's say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Okay, so we just rotate the object a little bit. Let's say this is delta theta. So the object, the, the point on the object moves on a, a arc, which has radius r. Let's call this arc length as S. So what I'm trying to uh, establish a relation between the amount of rotation, which is delta theta, and the amount of the distance that this point goes in space, okay, in the uh, direction of the rotation. So, I mean, if you want to calculate what is the distance or the arc length that the point goes from this point to this point on a rotation of delta theta it is just this distance r of the point of the distance of the point to the origin r multiplied by delta theta okay that's it in units of meters but uh, we have to uh, be careful on on this rotational angle is that it is in radian okay so we have to take this in radian. Suppose uh, we just 
uh, complete this rotation one revolution and start from this point and make the rotation until the point comes to its original position uh, original uh, angle uh, that makes uh, delta theta to be 2 pi and it is very obvious that upon one revolution the point will travel a distance of circumference of that circle which has a radius r so if you put 2 pi over here r 2 pi times r it is going to be circumference of a radius which has a, a radius r okay because you know we know that that point special point on this rigid body will just uh, uh, trace a circular path upon a rotation of uh, around this axis one revolution okay so i mean we always take this angle delta theta amount of rotation to be in units of radian and uh, 2 pi radian in terms of uh, degrees is equivalent to 360 degrees okay if you want to uh, you know if you want to uh, calculate this uh, arc length that the point traverses upon rotation uh, while you're measuring the angle in degrees you have to put this as like uh, r times delta theta divided by pi right uh, multiplied by sorry this divided by 180 degrees multiplied by pi and in in that case if you want to use this expression uh, that means uh, the amount of rotation no, angle the amount of rotational angle is given to you in terms of degrees if if it gives if it is given in terms of degrees then this is the expression you use you have to first convert degree into radian by using this conversion factor okay um next thing is okay since we discovered that if you put if you choose any point on a rigid body and rotate that rigid body around a fixed axis that point will travel a distance of s and this is how we calculate uh, this distance s by using the original position of the point to the center of rotation and the amount of angle that the point rotates okay so what about uh, if this continues like maybe uh, this rotation is, is continuously uh, you know rotating and we want to calculate in that case that point's tangential speed since now let me uh, just draw another uh, picture over here. I'm talking about that point, that special point. And now point, uh, while the object is rotating, is uh, traveling around this circular path, okay? Once it was here originally, and now it is here uh, by rotating some amount delta theta. So this is the amount of uh, distance or arc length that it goes, and if you if this this uh, motion is continuous and you want to uh, curious about how to calculate the tangential speed v of this uh, rotation if it is continuously doing its rotation, then what we do is in fact is there is a relation between s and v s is the arc length distance and if this is continuous you can take the time derivative of s which is uh, so th this is how we do how we uh, you know define the uh, velocity or speed upon a distance and use this expression and instead of uh, delta theta anyway uh, instead of delta theta i'm just going to use theta okay r times theta so r times d theta over dt if you take the time derivative of this expression this is what you get since uh, the uh, original distance to the center is fixed it's not changing it is not affected by taking the derivative with respect to time this is uh, how it goes and this ds over dt is going to be the tangential speed and this is r and we define now the uh, rotational rate, the angle, uh, uh, the angle 
uh, changing over time during this rotation uh, to be angular velocity okay so we just call we define angular velocity to be the rate of change of this angle that the uh, point is making uh, an angle with the x-axis okay so uh, while the point is rotating this angle is will always be changing so uh, if uh, this theta is changing over time why can we take the derivative of it and we, when, when you take the derivative of it we get an, a new definition namely physical quantity which we call angular speed okay so this is the angular speed okay omega and again uh, we uh, by conversion we take always i mean uh, the angle to be in radian but of course you can also use degrees but in 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 terms of radian the unit for angular speed is going to be radian per second okay this is very obvious and uh, the other thing is that this point is you know uh, has a linear speed or a tangential speed and that tangential speed and the angular speed are related to each other by this expression. This is one of the expressions that we are going to frequently use in this chapter. That tangential speed of a point on a rotating object is related to uh, the angular speed. Let me call this over here. If this uh, object is uh, rotating with an angular speed of omega, angular speed multiplied by the point's distance to the rotational axis okay so uh, these are uh, first kinematical quantities first if you're talking about the uh, location of a point on a rotating object that is nothing but theta theta now the angle is going to be used to locate where the object is on a rotating object okay uh, and this is a corresponding quantity in, in linear uh, motion of objects is just position x, right? If it's we're talking about the one dimension. Uh, now, uh, the location is uniquely given by the angle. Uh, in linear motion, linear quantities, location is just in one dimension, let's say, is x, okay? And in linear quantities, v is the speed and in rotational quantities omega is the angular speed this is the linear speed of an object which goes in in a certain axis but uh, if you're talking about the rotation of a point uh, the kinematics of the rotation how how uh, fast at the the point is rotating now we define a new velocity and this this velocity is the rate of change of the uh, angular location and it is called angular speed and as always uh, again uh, this angular speed and the uh, tangential speed of a rotating uh, point is always related by this equation well sometimes uh, also you you see this expression with the angular speed that referred as angular frequency and uh, it is in fact a frequency because it goes like 1 over s uh, it is related to linear frequency with this equation 2 pi multiplied by f where f is the frequency defined to be frequency uh, for a rotating point so what is frequency and how we can define the frequency of a rotating point uh, this is a very simple def uh, you know uh, definition there is a very simple definition for the frequency think about this point uh, in in its rotation uh, just count the number of revolutions per one second okay just you know measure your time your clock in one second how many times this point is rotated how many times this is frequency f okay and that frequency is related to the angular speed by again using this expression okay so what next is of course i mean uh, these quantities like angular speed might be constant if the object is rotating in a regular fashion i mean 
the amount of uh, angle that it rotates is the same per uh, unit intervals of time, then omega is going to be constant. But of course, uh, this need not, not to be case. And an object might uh, rotating in a fashion that its rotation speed is increasing, or its rotation rotation speed might be decreasing. So there is, there might be change in omega. Uh, similarly, uh, I mean, uh, if you think about the tangential speed of any point on the rotation on a rotation body, uh, that tangential speed is uniform for uniform circle uniform uh, rotating object, but if the object is uh, rotating in an increased manner, that V tangential speed will increase if the rotation is increasing over time. So that means uh, we have uh, the tangential acceleration. In that case, if V is changing, we can talk about the tangential acceleration. But before that, we always know that even in if uh, in, uh, on rotations, on uniform rotations, that doesn't change the speed of this tangential speed. Even if for the case of uh, uniform rotations, there is always this centripetal acceleration toward the center, and we already covered this before. There is always centripetal acceleration, and that centripetal acceleration is whatever the value of V, uh, tangential speed, is going to be V squared divided by R. R is the distance to the center of rotation or if you want to express this tangential acceleration in terms of angular speed it's going to be omega squared times r well even if there is no change in the rotation speed uh, the point is accelerating toward the center we know this from earlier chapters with by this amount but in addition to this if there is also change in the speed of the rotation that means uh, v is changing if you take dv over dt for this equation again r is always uh, constant because the distance is not changing toward the rotational axis r multiplied by d omega over dt and we will replace this dv over dt as the tangential acceleration which is the acceleration in uh, tangential to the uh, trace of the object or the trajectory object, let's denote this a t. This is the tangential acceleration. It may be accelerating or decelerating. It may be speeding up. The rotational speed might be increasing or decreasing, whatever it is. If it is decreasing, the tangential acceleration is going to be in reverse to the uh, direction of motion, direction of rotation, okay? Uh, so this is going to be replaced by, let me erase this, tangential acceleration okay and we call d omega over dt angular acceleration and we use a new symbol for that it is alpha so alpha is the angular acceleration that is uh, d omega over dt time rate of change of the angular speed okay and the tangential acceleration uh, is the points uh, tangential speed, the change in the tangential speed of the point. So these are related to each other. Tangential, this is the tangential acceleration, this is the tangential, sorry, this is the angular acceleration, this is the tangential acceleration. So in case, in, in, a, mar in a marginal case where the rotation is not uniform, the rotation speed might uh, change. Now we now have two different uh, uh, two different components for the total acceleration of the point in rotation. And these components are, one is the centripetal acceleration, which is toward the center of the rotation, and the other is the tangential acceleration, which is the tangent to the trajectory of the object. So that means the total, let me uh, put this over here, because I don't have space, uh, then the total acceleration a total magnitude of the total acceleration is going to be since we have in general these two components a c square plus a t square in square because these two components of the acceleration are perpendicular to each other and 
the point now is accelerating with this total acceleration and it can be easily found by using this centripetal acceleration square plus uh, tangential acceleration square add them all and take the square so this is uh, the expression for the total acceleration and now let's discuss uh, all these things in a complete uh, uh oh okay um so these are uh, so far the summary of all these quantities that the arc length the tangential distance uh, the angular uh, displacement and uh, angular velocity tangential uh, acceleration angular acceleration etc so how these are related to each other so uh, so in general let's talk about uh, the rotation of an object which has a constant angular acceleration so if the object has a constant angular acceleration that means d omega over dt is alpha and that means that refers to uh, omega is going to be changing over time by this equation okay remember the counterpart uh, in the constant uh, accelerated motion in one dimension it was like v is equal to initial velocity final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus uh, acceleration multiplied by t in rotation we just replace uh, v by omega the angular acceleration and uh, tangential acceleration uh, by uh, angular acceleration okay this is the angular velocity and this is the angular acceleration so uh, well the omega over dt means uh, since omega is just d theta over dt that means the omega over dt is d squared theta d, d t squared is alpha that means this suggests that theta the angular location of any point is initial position in the angular initial angle plus initial uh, angular speed plus one half alpha t square so uh, again uh, for the case of uh, linear motion motion in one dimensional object which has constant acceleration uh, it, the, we have the counterpart uh, equation remember x is equal to x0 plus v0 times t plus one half a t square so these are the kinematics in rotational motion because what changes in rotation is the angular uh, quantities and also remember that we had this uh, expression in in the case of one dimensional motion uh, v square is equal to v zero square plus two times acceleration times delta x so uh, by using this first and the second equation this equation and this equation we can uh, again find uh, the angular speed square to each other by using this expression 2 alpha delta theta and delta theta is theta minus theta 0 just like x is equal to x minus x0 x final minus x0 okay delta theta so these three equations will be enough for us for the general case of constant uh, accelerated rotations uh, to find the the angular position the angular velocity etc at any time okay so uh, let's uh, then use these concepts to find to solve some example problems so let's think about a windmill uh, okay it's rotating uh, but uh, it's rotation in such a way that it's slowing down and, and we just picture it uh, with an initial uh, angular speed of uh, 2.1 radian per second while it's uh, rotating at 2.1 radian per second suddenly it starts to slowing down the rotation is slowing down with a constant acceleration of 0 0.45 radian per second square okay and how long does it how long uh, does it take to stop okay so once you measure its rotation speed uh, initial rotation speed at 2.1 and then right at that point on it's slowing down with a constant rate 
of 0.45 radians per second square. So it means that in one second, uh, this angular speed is uh, uh, decreasing by amount of 0.45 radians per second. So by using this equation that omega is equal to omega 0 plus alpha times t, now it, since it will stop, eventually this is going to be 0. And this is initial uh, velocity, angular velocity. And since it's slowing down, this alpha is going to be negative, okay? Or positive, but uh, negative with the negative alpha 0 0.45 multiplied by t. So you can easily so solve this for t. It's going to be 2.1 divided by 0 0.35, so 45. So it's going to take like 4.7 seconds to make uh, to uh, to stop this uh, uh, rotating windmill. So let's uh, do another uh, example, which is a very nice example uh, of a rotating object. What you see over here is a micro hematocrit. What is a micro hematocrit? Is uh, this uh, device that has these four tubes? What you see over tubes over here. And these tubes are um, for collecting uh, blood. Uh, and these tubes are rotating around an axis, which is just, you know, uh, going to the perpendicular to the axis of this, uh, sorry, the surface of this uh, whiteboard. Uh, it's rotating around, around this axis, okay? So what's the purpose of this rotation is that uh, when the rotation is speed is increasing or with a very high speed of rotation because of the uh, acceleration of the rotation uh, the some particles in, inside the blood is going to be uh, collected to the bottom of the tubes so uh, some other light particles is going to uh, be in the upper part of the tube so it's kind of uh, separating separating the uh, red blood cells which are heavier uh, parts in the blood from the white blood cells and this is the way that uh, they you know produce the serum so uh, that's the uh, purpose of using this device and it's called micro hematocrit so uh, what it, what does it say in the problem is that this a micro hematocrit is just uh, speeding up with a constant acceleration angular acceleration of 95 uh, radian per second square it's very high uh, so every second it is increasing uh, angular speed of 95 radian per, sec radian per second. So the question is, what are the magnitudes of centripetal acceleration, the tangential acceleration, and the total acceleration in turn uh, at the bottom of the tube? I mean, uh, any point right over here, let's say that's that point. That point is going to, of course, uh, move like this if this, this is the rotational uh, direction okay uh, with uh, some uh, speed of course the speed is going is going to be increasing and this rotation is going to have a centripetal acceleration toward in this direction and since it's uh, speeding up it has the tangential acceleration in this direction in parallel to the uh, rotation uh, the the uh, direction of motion or uh, this velocity v this is a t this is AC toward the center and first part of the problem calculate these all uh, accelerations so uh, we know that uh, the uh, for any rotating object the centripetal acceleration is V square over R or omega square multiplied by R well R is going to be taken as this uh, tubes uh, length from the center to the rim it is given on over here you cannot uh, read very well but this is 9.08 centimeters, okay? So, uh, what are the magnitudes of this acceleration? When the angular speed is 8 radian per second. So, you can use this second expression for the centripetal acceleration. And when omega is 8, so 8 squared multiplied by, since uh, R is 9.07 centimeters, 9.07, but I have to convert it to uh, meters. So you multiply these numbers, you get 5.8 meter per second square as the centripetal acceleration. 
But uh, we have the other component of the acceleration while uh, the rotation speed is increasing. And that one is can be calculated by using the angular acceleration multiplied by r. And the angular acceleration is given in the problem 95 multiplied by, again, 907 centimeters converted to meters. So once you do this multiplication, we get 8.622 red, so meter per second square. Of course, this is the tangential acceleration. The unit is going to be meter per second square. So, just what we found that these uh, components of the acceleration, all right, uh, for the bottom of the tube, and then total acceleration is going to be a total, is going to be just square of these quantities, sum of the square of these quantities, then take the square root. So, if you do this, you get 10.4 meter per second square. So the next part of the question is that what angle does the total acceleration make with the direction of motion? I mean, uh, what the question is, is let's carry this point over here. While it's uh, going in this direction, this is the centripetal direction. This is AC. And it has, of course, AT, right? Uh, what angle does the total acceleration make with the direction? So if this, these are the two components of the acceleration, the total acceleration is going to look like uh, this vector, right? So this is uh, uh, the component of the acceleration which is just parallel to the direction of motion, parallel to tangential speed. And this is the perpendicular acceleration. Let me put this in a better way. If these are the components, then this is going to be total acceleration. Okay. So the question is asking, what is the angle with the total acceleration in the direction of motion? So it is asking this angle. Okay. That angle is, of course, by using the trigonometry, tangent of this angle is going to be uh, this component divided by this component, right? Or arctangent, theta is going to be arctangent, a C because this component A C divided by A T. So A C is this quantity and A T is this quantity. Arc tangent 5.8 divided by 8.62. And if you calculate, if you do this calculation in your calculator, you're going to find theta in degrees. It is going to be 33.9 degrees. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's a nice example of how to calculate these all components of the accelerations in a rotational motion.